Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences. The second part of the Knowledge Sutra series is about the first steps that a new seeker should take to ensure success on the spiritual journey. These are the first steps that every seeker should take and every seeker should know. Usually when a newcomer enters into spirituality, they know nothing about it. There is a huge and eternal system that is running which we can generally call the spiritual system. It is the greatest system in the universe. In short, it simply means that whenever a person is ready for spiritual progress, he or she is helped by any means possible. It does not matter where they live, at what time they are born and under what conditions they are living. Every other system in this universe comes and goes away, but the spiritual system is forever. This can also be called a process of spiritual ripening. As soon as a person is ready, they are picked up by the system. This is the most important process in the entire universe. Nothing else is more important than this. The spiritual system takes different forms in different ages and different places in the universe. But essentially, it is a system to help the seekers. You can also call it the wheel of truth, which keeps spinning no matter what, no matter how low that world is and doesn't matter if that world is a very high world. Since in this world, our earth at this time, majority of humanity is not spiritual, this system is somewhat hidden. You will enter the system as soon as you decide to walk on a spiritual path. As soon as you hear about spirituality, about its real meaning, just like we revealed in the last video. And if you are attracted to that, you are in the system. Now the system will do everything possible to help you. Probably this is the first thing you should know that there is such a thing called spirituality. And there is a universal system which may not be obvious at first. When you enter spirituality, you will want something. You will desire to achieve something. And that desire is called a spiritual goal. And you must have guessed, everybody has a different and unique spiritual goal. And the spiritual goal is the first thing that a seeker decides or must decide. In technical terms, we can say that a spiritual goal is simply a state of being. For example, being free, being blissful, being loving. And the seeker desires to come into that state of being. If you are a spiritual person, the spiritual goal is your highest goal in the life. You are born to do it. It is your highest desire. And the rest of your life is simply a support structure for you to reach that spiritual goal. Usually, if somebody is attracted towards spirituality, they are not very clear about their spiritual goal. Obviously, you will not come here if you don't want anything. So, it is necessary to find out what do you actually want? Why do you want to come in the spiritual system? Why were you born? This should be your first question to yourself. What do I want in my life? What is the highest meaning and purpose of my life? Is it spiritual or looks like spiritual? Then yes, you can enter the spiritual system and it will be somewhat unique for everybody but similar. For example, some people will say, I want the highest knowledge. Some will say, I want to know myself. Some will want freedom or liberation and some will want simply happiness, bliss, peace. There can be some who will want powers or fulfillment of desires or rapid evolution. But when a newcomer arrives here, they are simply exploring. And yes, exploring spirituality can be a very valid spiritual goal. But ultimately, you must decide on a proper spiritual goal. You can take your sweet time. This will be very important. If you do not know your spiritual goal, yes, the whole system is here to help you. Once you have a goal or once you like something, you want to reach there. And the way to achieve your spiritual goal will be called 
a spiritual path. Spiritual path is a method which helps to achieve your spiritual goal. So your goal decides your path. What do you want to achieve will decide which method you want to utilize, which way to go. And in the spiritual system, there are sometimes more than one way to reach your goals. So the second thing a newcomer should do is decide on a spiritual path. There are great spiritual paths available in the universal spiritual system. Usually, we call them spiritual traditions. They are the systems or methods set up by the pioneers or the great masters of the spiritual system. And these traditions, they offer systematic teachings, a set of methods, guidelines to achieve your spiritual goal. So if you pick a spiritual path, you will find that there are many traditions who offer their services for those who are walking on those paths. Once you are on a path, it is good to have somebody who can guide you on that path, who can teach you, who can show you how to walk on that path to reach your spiritual goal. And this person will be called a spiritual guide. A guide is one who has already progressed on that path which you have taken up now. These guides guide all the seekers who belong to their path. Sometimes they help to choose the path also and many times they protect that spiritual tradition to which they belong. Normally people know them by the names of guides, masters, teachers or gurus. We are going to call them spiritual guides and they make your journey very easy. And so they are indispensable. You cannot hope to progress on that path without the help of these guides. They are nothing special outwardly. They look like normal people, living human guides. But they can come in many forms. And there can be others who belong to the spiritual system who are always ready to help newcomers. We are going to call them spiritual assistants. They have some great spiritual achievements, but probably they are not actively guiding everyone. But they are of a great help. For example, various teachers that came before, the professors, the interpreters of ancient scriptures, philosophers and wise men or women in different places. They have a significant achievement in their field and the tradition is kept alive by these people. They leave behind a lot of books, a lot of methods, which are then utilized by seekers and spiritual guides to train the newcomers. They may not guide you directly, but their help is available indirectly. Their teachings are invaluable. So whatever the guides are teaching you will be called the spiritual teachings. And mostly they are pointers. Mostly they are words that help to remove your ignorance. The teachings come in many forms such as philosophies, theories, methods, sciences, practical techniques and arts of various kinds. Sometimes the teachings are recorded in books or scriptures. So once you choose the path and you have somebody to guide you, the job of the seeker now is to receive these teachings, to study. And the next step is implementation of these teachings. They are called spiritual practices. You need to live those teachings. Simply reading them or listening them or taking them from your guide is not so effective. You need to utilize these methods to reach your goal. And any spiritual practice is mostly experimentation. You need to experiment with them. You need to convert them into your own experience. So when you make a practical use of these teachings, the teachings become your practice. Sometimes you will face difficulties in implementation of these teachings and then some means are utilized to help the seeker progress forward. You may encounter obstacles or internal resistances, any other difficulties and your guide or guru will prescribe suitable means to remove them. If there are any faults in the body or the mind, in the behavior or intelligence, ways will be suggested to rectify them, purify yourself. These means are themselves not practices, not your goal. They are ways to clear your path, 
we call them spiritual means or skillful means they can be used to convey the teachings effectively as you implement the teachings you will start progressing on the spiritual path you will reach new milestones so spiritual progress simply means getting closer and closer to your goal the spiritual goal and totally depends on the sincerity of the seeker his interest his passion for their spiritual goal how fast they will progress how will you know that you are progressing it is very easy you will reach near your goals what are the milestones they will be different on different paths and your guide will help you to recognize them your guide will evaluate you evaluate your progress and judge your progress if you are not progressing something will be prescribed if it is not possible to progress new paths will be prescribed some paths are very effective for some kinds of goals which you will learn shortly as you progress you may see some changes in yourself these are called the spiritual effects they are simply side effects of your practices the body may improve because the practice involves some kind of physical exercises the mind may improve because of the knowledge and purification behavior may improve or there can be sometimes negative effects also these things happen as you progress these changes sometimes appear but it is not necessary that they will happen and that is why they are called side effects since everybody is unique they will get unique kind of spiritual effects but one should remember that effects are not to be confused with the goal your goal is not to have certain kind of effect on yourself your goal is much bigger sometimes these effects they appear and disappear although these effects are a good indicator of progress or retardation on the spiritual path but they should not be given so much importance once you reach your goal you will get the spiritual fruit and that is attaining that goal itself that can be called the spiritual attainment and thus your life will be fulfilled your purpose will be fulfilled that for which you are born will be attained and that is called the spiritual fruit which is simply that for which you started so these are the steps in general broadly speaking in summary you can say that you must know that there is a spiritual system it appears in many many forms you are not alone and you are not the only one but you are unique and you will have a unique goal it is necessary to start with the goal the goal will decide the path choose the optimum path fastest path possible you may want to join a tradition which teaches that path you may decide to walk alone but that will be difficult and time consuming you will need a guide who has already traveled on that path who has already attained his or her goals although that is not totally necessary he should be somewhere near the goals you should receive the teachings from the guide stay with the guide for as long as it takes and practice those teachings utilize the means whatever means needed to make your progress smooth and quick evaluate your progress check the effects if there are effects check if they are positive if there are negative effects consult your guide check your progress check your path always double check your goals and finally you will get the fruits this is like a map this map is the most important map of spirituality if you do not follow these steps there is a chance that you will get lost because the spiritual field is vast it helps to have a map it helps to join the system it helps to have a guide and a clearly visible goal about which we'll talk in the next part